Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Good day. Welcome to our devotion time. Today we'll be speaking about a very interesting topic. Loved but unfulfilled. Can that happen? Can you be loved and still be unfulfilled? Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Genesis chapter 29, verse 17. Leah was tender-eyed, but Rachel was beautiful and well-favored. Verse 18, And Jacob loved Rachel and said, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel thy younger daughter. Well, Rachel the Bible tells me was beautiful and she was well favored. How can she be unfulfilled? Let's look at a story for a short while. She grew up with a responsibility when Jacob met her. She had taken a father's flock to the river for, for them to get some water. She was disciplined. Um, she was promised to be given in marriage and we know the story. Uh, she got disappointed. Her sister instead was the one who got married first to, to Jacob. But uh, Jacob loved, loved her. And, uh, and she worked uh, 14 years uh, to be with her. When she eventually got married, she could not have kids. And this feeling of not having kids in her marriage uh, left her with a hole that in her heart felt that it could not be filled. And hence the title of saying loved but unfulfilled. Genesis 30 verse 1 it says that and when Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister and said unto Jacob, Give me children or else I die. This is a, a person who I said was beautiful and the Bible says was well favored. There's just one thing in her life, just one, that she could not have. And her response was, well, if I don't get this, will I die? Well, Jacob was surprised and said, well, I'm not God. I'm not the one that has uh, withheld children uh, from you. So, so we can find ourselves in, in our lives where we, we have most things or even say that we have everything and there's just this one thing that, that we want so much with our hearts and when we don't get it, at the time that we want it, our response is, or else I die. We, 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 we forget that we are loved. We just see that we are unfulfilled. So you may find that we've got so much blessings in our lives. We are loved by our parents, loved by our families, but maybe we don't have money. And we look at that in our lives and we say, well, if I don't have this, will I die? Some of us have got everything that we can think of. We've got very good jobs, we've got money, we loved by our parents, but there's something that is lacking. And it's a challenge with some young men and, and some young ladies. They're not married. So you're like, you have all this thing that everyone else looking at may want, but there's a lack of a husband or a lack of a wife. And when you look at your life, you say, well, if I don't have this, will I die? See, I believe, and the Bible says, all things work together for good to them that love the Lord and to those that are called according to his purpose. So whatever it is that we may find that we are lacking, it is for our own good. But for Rachel, she didn't see that. Because she saw someone who had something that she wanted and envied, 
she didn't like her sister. She envied her sister. And she wanted Jacob to give her the thing that she lacked. She forgot the love that Jacob had. Forgot that Jacob worked 14 years for her. Forgot all of that. Because she was missing one thing. I've got a question to you viewers. What is the one thing that you are chasing that you believe that God has withheld from you? What is this one thing that you say to yourself, well, I may be loved, but I'm unfulfilled because I just don't have this one thing. Well, I, we live very miserable lives because we lack one thing in the midst of plenty. So when we count our blessings and uh, name them one by one, maybe we find that there's just only one. There's only one that is uh, missing for us. Israelites had everything, had God as their king. They were living in the land of milk and honey. They looked at other nations surrounding them. And when they looked at them, they saw that they have kings and they didn't have a king. They had everything, but they didn't have a king. And so they wanted a king. Uh, the reason why they wanted a king is that they wanted to be like other nations. And sometimes we find that the reason we want just that one thing is so that we can be the same as other people. And so with Rachel, her sister was married and the sister had children. And so she lacked this one thing and wanted to have children. Well, the Israelites uh, rejected God and uh, wanted the one thing which was withheld from them because God was their true king. And they had a king, King Saul. We, we know the story. We know that um, that's the beginning of some of the fall of uh, the Israelites. Um, and they were warned that, well, this one thing that you want, this king is going to tax you. Uh, 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 this king is going to take your daughters. Uh, uh, but they still wanted it. And, and, and we find ourselves also that even against warning of what we want, we still want it. Love but yet unfulfilled. No, higher than the highest human thought can reach is God's ideal for men. So this is not to say that we should not desire for greater things. It's not to say that uh, God does not want us to improve from where we are uh, to where he wants us to be. Far from that. This is about desiring things and being unhappy because we don't have them and seeing death as even a better outcome than living and serving the almighty God. This is about forgetting everything that God has given to us and only focusing our lives the one thing that we don't have. Our idea is that we need to seek after God and his righteousness and not seek after the things that we perceive to be missing in our lives. So for Rachel, when she looked at herself, there was something missing. There was just something missing. And for us, we see maybe not even one thing missing. We see a lot of things missing. But what we don't see missing is God in our lives. And that's what God wants us to do. God wants us to seek after him and his righteousness. Now, listen to this. Rachel seeing that uh, she didn't have children, her sister had children, uh, came up with a plan. And the plan was very simple. I've got a mate that's looking after me. I'm going to go to my husband and tell Jacob and say, well, I'm going to give you my mate and uh, go unto her, sleep with her, so that I may have children by her. A relationship, a sacred relationship has been blessed, a union that has been blessed by God because of a lack 
just this one thing. Rachel decides that, well, I've got to come up with a plan. And my plan is that my husband must sleep with my mate so that I can have children. And so, well, she had children through that. But she had not waited unto, uh, unto the lot. She came up with a plan to solve what she thought was missing. And to what extent do we go to ourselves to solve something that we think is missing? You no. Know, people have, as I said, love of their parents and they think that, well, I don't have money. Well, maybe not enough money. And so what do we do? We start trying to procure money in a means that God has not designed. We, we start getting into um, illegal transactions uh, that God um, has not designed. We, we see that we are not married. And there's this just one thing that is missing from us. And, and how do we solve it? Uh, do we go and become like Rachel? And we say, well, doesn't look like this is going to happen to me. Uh, so if it's not going to happen to me, uh, I'm, I'm going to find someone. It doesn't matter whether I'm married or not, I'm going to live with this particular person. And I will live as though I am married. We start taking things into our own hands, things that should be squarely left in the realm of God. So Rachel uh, devised a plan. And friends, uh, this was not God's plan. After time, uh, God opened the womb of Rachel and she had two kids, Joseph and Benjamin. Now, we are not patient people. Uh, patience is something that uh, we often find lacks with us. We need to wait upon God. Even if we don't have the things that we want, we have to look around us with the things that God has given unto us and truly believe that indeed all things work together for good to them that love God and to those that are called according to his purpose. Because this perceived lack it creates in it envy. It creates in it covetousness. It creates in it negative feelings. A whole life, we are unhappy. We are not in the present. We are always just looking at the things that we don't have, but not the things that we have. Had Rachel looked at her life and seen that she was well favored. Had Rachel looked at her life and saw that, well, God has blessed me with uh, this beauty. God has uh, blessed me with a, a husband that loves me, a husband that has decided to work 14 years to be with me. She would not, I believe, probably have said unto Jacob, give me children or else I die. If we look unto God and see the things that he has given us, how we are alive, how we've got Jesus who has died for us, how we, our sins can be forgiven as we come unto him, how we would have the opportunity of living with Jesus in eternity. Even outside of eternal life, the temporal things that God has given unto us and continues to give unto us day by day, if we look at our blessings, we can see that we are indeed loved. And friends, we will be fulfilled. And unlike Rachel, focusing only on the one thing that we don't have. What is the one thing that you don't have that is making you to feel unfulfilled? Focus on Jesus. Focus on God. And he's the one that will fill your heart. Uh, because there is nothing that Jesus cannot fill. And I want to leave you and say you are loved and fulfilled. Amen.